At Gazara Cairo, King Farouk is there for the start of Egypt's Grand Prix. The 16 drivers are off on the 50 lap journey, a distance of 45 miles. All the cars are Italian built 1100 litre Cis Italia. With Brooklyn's closed and British car racing in the doldrums, ex enemy Italy makes a bid to lead the world. Soon after the start, Italy's Coitesse, number 5, takes the lead, followed by Pagare, number 18. Cortese increases his lead in each lap and keeps it until the end. He comes in a winner, clocking 45 minutes, 49.2 seconds, an average speed of 60 miles an hour. To the victor goes the Grand Prix Cup, presented by King Farouk. Next time, let's hope a British team will be competing. The Kremlin Moscow. In the Soviet capital, the big four foreign ministers meet. The most important conference since Potsdam, it will decide on peace terms for Germany. Russian Foreign Minister Vyacheslav Molotov is the host. Off to a flying start, so far he hasn't said no. But he has attacked almost every aspect of Anglo-American policy in Germany. The second move in the verbal battle comes from Ernest Bevin. Rejecting Molotov's proposal to drop the fusion of the German zones, Bevin had the support of Mr. George Marshall, recently appointed American Secretary of State in Moscow for the first time. Fourth man at the meeting is France's Foreign Minister Georges Bidot. A weary and anxious world awaits the outcome. The Big Four can decide whether or not we shall have peace in our time. After Britain's coldest spell for over 50 years come the biggest road floods in living memory. Swollen by the melted snow, peaceful rivers turn into 35 miles an hour rapids. All over the south, the flood spread. In Clapton, London, Pathé cameramen are there for the rescue of people trapped in their waterlogged homes. The River Lee has done the damage here. By rowing boat and punts, police and firemen work to evacuate marooned people. From the rest of the country, reports flow in of more and bigger floods. From the fens come these pictures. The situation there is described as very critical. To our reporter, the Fenland people tell their story. Well, Mrs. Gudgeon, you seem to have had a very frightening time. Tell me what happened last night. Well, we were just ready to go to bed when police came and uh, asked us to get Hubby, who is an invalid, up and get him out from the, the banks here into a... a Gentlemen's Institute at Pricklow. So you really had to get out in a, in a uh, big yes, hurry? Yes, What well, about you, Mrs. Benstead? What were you doing? Oh, I was sat knitting when I had an outcome of the door, so I grabbed the three children out, and we couldn't dress them. We just put some warm woolies on, and uh, the wind was too strong, and we had some kind people from here. They took us in a car, and we joined our neighbours. I see. To a Britain recovering from snow and gales, the floods bring increased damage. At 1.20 in the afternoon, 23 people left Nice for Paris. They flew in a Dakota aircraft. At 3 o'clock, in the gaunt wastes of the French Alps, those 23 passengers were dead in yet another crash involving the ill-fated Dakotas. Ski troops and police searched many hours for passengers and crew. No hope of life remained. The driving snow had buried every trace. With sticks and rods, the search continued. Somewhere beneath this white expanse are the bodies of the 23. An air journey begun at Nice has ended in death. 13 bodies have been recovered. The search for the others goes on. Since January, in 18 major air crashes, a hundred human lives have been lost in Europe alone. A world increasingly air-minded demands full explanation. <laughs> <laughs>